What's up guys, this is Dr. McFarland and tonight I thought I'd switch it up a little bit and use the full size head rush and we're loud. So let me turn this down a little bit here. Shut the door here or something so I don't wake up the kids. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm using the 1x12 FRFR speaker. I'm in drop D for some reason. I think the artist that was in here the other day was in drop D recording a song. So let me tune up here. And to start off, what I uh, wanted to do, I was messing around with some of the, the presets that come stock with uh, the head rush. And so I'm going to deconstruct um, one of those rigs here. Now, I wanted to be able to use my feet and I think I can zoom in a little bit here. Something like that. It's not going to be perfect, but maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Let me turn the uh, light off overhead. And yeah, that makes it a little bit better. Not too bad. Let me know if it gets annoying. So there's the full size. And if I zoom in a little bit. I wish I could double tap and have it um, focus a little bit better, but it just is. It is what it is for right now. So we're going to work on this Inner Sandman um, rig, which is just called Sandman. And they have, there's a lot of different things going on with it here. Um, so to start off with, we're looking at the, uh, the amp. And I might need to, I might have to change this after all. I'm using an M2 lead. And then it has a 2x12 B30, which is a vintage 30. And then the other cab is the, the classic 30. So that's a vintage 30 cab as well. All right. So that's what this sounds like. This may not work because I'm not going to be able to get to the screen very well. Let's do this. And I got to take my jacket off. It's going to get a little, going to get a little hot in here. I was wanting to have this on the floor so I could use my, uh, you know, the expression pedal to do some stuff, but it may not be may not be doable tonight and if I have to I can just uh, you know hook up an expression pedal or something and do it that way but I want to make sure you guys are able to see what I'm doing all right it's not too bad and I do have the global settings. I do have the brightness all the way down. So 
Let's go here. We can change the depth of the color. I don't even know what that does. Color degrees. Okay. I'm okay with all that. So, deconstructing a rig. So what we're gonna do, here's the mm -hmm. inner Sandman rig. So here's a riff that you would normally hear with the inner Sandman. <laughs> So they do have a para EQ before the amp and cab. So let's go into that and see what they've done. Um, nothing on the, nothing on the lows. Nothing on gain two. On gain three, they've taken down a little bit of uh, three and a half K. So let's kick that in. Actually, we've already kicked it in. So here we go. Okay, that's a, that's a good point right there. So I had someone earlier today ask me how to take the fizz out of the amp sound. And I was like, what fizz? I mean, you know, head rush sounds super smooth to me. But if you're hearing any kind of fizz, it's probably gonna be in that two to 4K range. So by going to a pair of EQ and, you know, going to that frequency range there, somewhere between, you know, three and a half or three point, Sorry, uh, yeah, I guess 3.5 and maybe 2K. And just kind of scooping that out a little bit is really gonna help tame some of those upper mid frequencies that might sound a little fizzy to your ears, okay? <laughs> So that's what they did with that. And then they actually boosted 2.2K 5 dB. So they, they've cut at 3.5, but they also boosted at uh, two. So that's kind of interesting. And one in four are shelves. So if I can, if I can draw you, let me draw you a little diagram here. Okay, let's check this out. So what they've done, this is your this is your frequency range right here, right? Here's just a flat response. So what they've done, the top shelf here is 2K. All right, you can see that 2K. What they've done, they've shelved 2K and they boosted that 5 dB. But at 3K right here, they've actually cut it. All right, so they're still boosting the highs, but they're also cutting a little bit of that range right there. All right, so check this out. So a pair of EQ gives you multiple different frequency ranges. All right, so we got gain one, and you can control any gain, any frequency setting from zero all the way up to 2K. Okay, that's the range of the lower gain shelf area okay but they didn't boost or cut anything in there they just and that's just where that is gain two goes from 100 hertz all the way up to 10k all right so it gives you a little bit lower and higher area and then gain three is going to go from 200 to 20k Okay, so you have a lot more uh, frequency range there to work with. So we gotta set this back to uh, 3.5. And then our gain four, which is a shelf, which you can also change that. This goes from 200 to, to, to uh, sorry, the 20,000 as well. So, so basically what they've done is they've taken a 2K shelf and boosted everything above 2K. But then they took a separate EQ and they've actually cut that little area from the EQ. So it's like you get this boost, 
a cut, and then a boost, okay? Now the shelf on the bottom, you could have it shelving down or you can have it, you know, slope, slope down like that, okay? So that's just what a pair of EQ does. So you can either scoop areas or you can boost areas. And then the Q section right here, Q4, is either going to give you a very wide boost or it could give you a very sharp boost, okay, depending on how uh, how flat it is. So the flatter it is, the wider the, the Q. And then the higher the Q is, the skinnier, you know, this very, very skinny Q versus like a very wide Q like that. I, I hope that makes sense to you guys. So that's how a Perry EQ works. And also to answer the question from the guy earlier, he's like, hey, how can I take out that fizz, that fizz kind of sound that I'm hearing in some amps? Well, that's how you can keep the high end intact, but also cutting just very, very small areas of the frequency range, okay? So that is the para EQ. Then after the EQ, or after the amps, they added a graphic EQ, okay? So graphically, you basically just have, here's your frequency response. You either have up or you have down, okay? There's no Q, there's no widening of the frequencies or whatever else. It's just either an up or a down, okay? So the first one is 100 hertz, HZ, right? So 100 hertz. So at 100 hertz, you could either cut that or you can boost it. You can cut it by 12 dB or you can boost it by 12 dB, okay? So this is going to be your low end. The low mids right here is going to be on the graphic EQ. That's a 370 range, okay? So once again, you can either boost or you can cut at 370. The next one is 800, and that's going to be your mid range. So you got 800 right here. You can boost or you can cut. Then you got 2K, which you're going to boost or you can cut. Then you got 3.25, 3.25, and you can either boost or you can cut. Okay, so that's what a graphic EQ does. There's no, you, you don't have a, a width uh, knob to, to adjust the width of your frequency range. You just have either up or down. Okay, so 100, 370, 800, 2, and 3.25. All right, so that's how that works. And let's see what they did. They've actually, I think they had this on three. So the, at 100 hertz, they cut it by three. They cut out 370. They cut out 800. And they left two, and they boosted a little bit of 3.25. So let's listen to the before. Turn it up here. <laughs> Okay, so by cutting the lower mids, you're automatically going to accentuate the high end. You know, even though you don't turn the high end up, you're still going to emphasize the high end because you're cutting other frequencies around it. Okay, does that make sense? So, so there's a lot more mid range. Now by scooping the mids, the upper and low mids, let's keep the lows intact. Let's keep the the low is normal. So if you think back to the, uh, you know, Injustice for All album, that was a very, very scooped mid-range album. No bass at all. I mean, even though Jason Newstead played bass on the album, there's not, really not a whole lot of bass and all that. So I wish this thing could get a little bit closer. So that way the uh, the yellows can focus, but that's not gonna happen tonight, folks. So even if I zoom in, it's not gonna it's not gonna do it. So so there's a pair EQ and a graphical EQ. So here's without. Here's the para before. And here's the graphic after. Okay. Uh, this does have a bright switch on the amp, which is down here. So you can see you can turn that on or off. This actually doesn't. All 
right, that had a Dynot, a uh, compressor in here, but I don't know why, because it's Metallica. You don't really need compression, but. So really the EQ is before and after. Okay, I would probably just turn off the para. Okay, just leave it at that. Um, and then they had a reverb on, which I wasn't too fond of. All right, so that's that. That's Sandman. Uh, I'm not gonna, I didn't change anything, so there's no reason to save it. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to um do i have any suggested rigs in here kelly simone's dr riggs <laughs> all right we're just gonna do new set list we're gonna say viewer suggested headrush rigs 14. so there you go now we can just save any song we want in there Okay, I don't want a song. New set list. Okay. Let's go here. Let's go new rig. Okay. All right, I think we have to, uh, we have to create a rig and then we can put it in a set list. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off, I have wrote this down. Because I posted in the group earlier today on what songs or styles you wanted. So I heard some U2, some ZZ Top, some Boston, Coldplay. I heard Blinded by the Light on the radio today, so I'm going to do something with that. And then I heard uh, Slash Tone, and then uh, how to create a string, uh, some kind of string sound. Maybe we'll get to that, but let's work on, uh, let's work on Slash first. So I'm going to go in here. He more than likely plays a JCM 800. Um, so let's just make it a, a, a TS mod. Because I was going to put, put in a Tube Screamer anyway, but this is going to help uh, get our sound a little bit quicker. So... <laughs> I'm gonna get a different guitar. Let me get that real fast. All right, I'm gonna use my uh, my Reverend Sensei since it has humbucker pickups. Um, I'm should be in tune, fairly in tune. Didn't have to be 440. Uh, what did y'all think of the gig board live stream today with Brian from Head Rush? I thought he did a good job. I think there does need to be some additional MIDI um, stuff going on. So first thing I like to do, you always want to make sure that your output is not going above zero. And it looks like we can stand to probably turn the master volume up. All right, so let's go with the, uh, the sorry, I just ate at Chili's. Uh, let's go with the suggestion of, hey, how can we get the fizz out? So let's go here. Uh, let's do a pair of EQ. We're going to do default. Let's just do what we did on the other on the other uh, thing here. So we're gonna go 200 and we're going to cut around 3K. So let's see what happens. All right, on this gain, we're gonna go down to two 
something and we're going to turn it up and we're going to make sure it's a shelf, which it is. <laughs> So what I was uh, playing earlier today was some uh, Okay, all right, that's a good sound, but I'm playing on my bridge pickup now What if you played that lick on the neck pickup and see how the sound changes? See, I think the neck pickup sounds really good for that lick because it sounds pretty smooth on the recording there. Um, just for fun, let's put in a uh, let's put in a tube screamer. And we're going to say drive down, volume all the way up. Okay, so I really don't know what else to do with this. Maybe add in, I mean, just a little bit of Bucket Brigade delay. I mean, just like a tad. We hadn't even touched really. Let's turn the preamp gain down a little bit. I'm gonna clear, you know, just clear up the, the mightiness. Turn down the bass just a little bit, maybe bring up the treble. <laughs> Let's say, let's go ahead and bring in a volume pedal. We're going to do defaults. That way we can bring in and out our volume. And I always want to add volume first and then wall pedal second because I like having the wall be on B. So now you can click back and forth. Unless. I can turn A on and off. Why can't I switch back and forth? Pedal, pedal, pedal. I don't know, I'm baffled. Maybe, no, I can still just swap between, I should be able to swap back and forth. I don't know. Volume, range, assign. Yeah, pedal. All right, I'm not gonna mess with it right now. Just know that, you know, the volume and uh, wall is gonna be uh, flipped back and forth here. So we're gonna do slash, okay? Uh, A, F, D. All right, so that's pretty good. So you just got a little bit of Little amp, cab, delay, tube screamer, 
I mean, you can kind of experiment with the EQ. See if it does anything for you. Um, yeah. I think it's fine. All right, cool. So let's mark that one off. Let's say we're going to go to... All right, let's do this. I want to be able to... Go into here, let's add a song, which is gonna be at the very, very bottom now. So we're gonna add that in there. We're gonna save it. There we go. So now if we go in there, now we're gonna have that rig in the set list and now whatever new rig we create is also gonna be in the set list. Now let's switch over to Coplay for a second. And so I do want to talk about um, the gear that some people use. So Coplay has pretty much over the years only used Fender Hot Rod Deluxes or DeVilles. And the purpose and reasoning behind that is I I've saw this in, a, um, in an interview one time that you know, they travel all over the world. So they wanted an amp that if they knew it, if it were to break down, they could easily replace the amp. They could just go to any guitar center, any store, and just, you know, pick up a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe or a DeVille, you know. Um, so when you see them on stage, you know, playing, that's what they're using. They're just using run-of-the-mill stock, straight from guitar center, straight from your local guitar store kind of amp. Because they know it's readily available. So, with that said, we're going to use a... Uh, I keep belching, guys. Sorry. I feel very embarrassed. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use a... Um, I'm not really sure what the closest thing would be. Let's use... Uh, let's use a Super Reverb. Those are pretty uh, accessible, right? I would think. Let's put an SM57 on there. All right, we're gonna save. I know he uses reverb a lot. Let's go to 11 verb. And let's say he uses some kind of, uh... all right, I'm just gonna do like a medium plate, okay? I'm gonna turn down, turn the tails on, turn the mix down. Once again, I'm going to change guitars. I don't want to use humbuckers for this one. Uh, I want to say his name is Johnny Buckland. And he primarily uses Telecasters or Stratocasters. He'll kind of go back and forth depending on the album that they're playing. Though some of his Telecasters do have humbuckers in them. But I'm just I'm gonna use my uh, my Reverend um, Warhawk because it has. Uh, I gotta see what time it is. I got a session tonight at nine o'clock. All right, we're we're going good here. Um, so thanks guys for uh, tuning in tonight, and uh, I'm gonna try and make it worth your while here. To, uh, to get some cool tones, so. All right, so first thing I wanna do, I wanna turn the volume up. And it's okay for it to be a little, you know, a little broken up. Yeah, I know. Yellow's not that great. 
Um, let's go to the amp and let's make it blue. How about that? Hey, that's good. Thanks for that suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason, yellow didn't really show up all that great on here. So that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, I'm actually not too fond of this sound. Let's go to a different sound. We're going to go with a Fender. Still the Fender. Um, let's just go with a Black Duo. That's going to be good. And once again, we're going to Crank it up here. Okay. There's that. Let's add in. Now, the most important thing about this sound is he uses a Proco Rat as his uh, overdrive sound. And if you, when you start cranking it up, it, kind of, it can get pretty fuzzy sounding. Um, let's actually go tails, sync, core note. Let's see, what, what song? What's that song? Back going here. So we're going to add in, I was trying to remember how to play the song. So the Black Op is the Proco Rat, okay? So we're going to, on the Rat, the cut knob is a filter for the mid-range. So 100% is going to be really dark. And then all the way up. It's going to be full brightness, okay? So we're gonna, I usually like it pretty dark on here, so we can go. All right, I'm gonna do a looper. Watch out folks. I'm gonna stand up for this. If I can get my foot up here. So I'm going to go... Alright, here we go. So... Nope, sorry. Let me do a... Let me do a clean tone first. So we're going to go... Oh, here we go.
Sorry. All right, that's fine. I hadn't used a looper in a while. Uh, not for that anyway. Let me put it on a different color so you guys can see it. All right, so that's Coldplay. Um, now, I do know he had the DL4 back in the day. So he would do some, uh, he would do like an auto swell kind of stuff. So we'll put that in. Let's say he has a compressor. Dynacomp. I need to uh, I need to save some of my settings from the gig board onto here. So I've been kind of using the gig board here a lot lately. This should be pretty close. So have a little tremolo in here I'm sure there's a few songs he uses tremolo on got to you gotta do it I know I said tremolo where is it there it is down there so we're gonna do a slow pan I don't know uh, something like that oh, that's fine that's yeah, pretty fun all right, you can just kind of mess around with it a little bit. All right, there's sure I'm sure there's all kinds of other stuff you can do with that, but that's good for now. Uh, we're gonna do let's do Boston real fast. I think I can crank that out pretty fast here. So with Boston. I know they use some kind of Marshall amp. I'm sure everybody uses Marshall amps, right? Um, let's just say he used 45. And we're going to crank it to hell and high water. And a little bit of that, a little bit of that. So... Do peace of mind, so all right. So, I think how to get that sound he has is we have to do a Stereo doubler, we're gonna do lights and see what happens.
haven't played that song in a long time. Um, I used to train my ear back in high school by uh, learning different songs over the radio. And I also had lots of books back then, which if you listen to my, if, or, or if you trying to do a live stream here. Uh, try this. I found it online. Oh, maybe a Saldano. That'd be cool. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's do a Saldano real fast. Let's, let's do a Saldano real fast. That's always fun. Turn the game down, master up. Cool. Yeah, that's a, that sounded pretty good. Let's do a delay. And I don't know. I tend to use Bucket Brigade, but let's go with the Dynacomp or Dyn Delay. Let's do a de uh, Dyn Stereo. Mix down. Yeah, I think for. You know, maybe your slash or your uh, your ZZ Top kind of stuff. Maybe a Marshall's good, but if you want really something over the top, I think so. Daniel amps are. Uh, I think they fit the bill pretty good for what I'm hearing. Thanks that. Th thanks Peter for suggesting that. That was uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> You see that we don't have to have like a lot of, uh, you know, too much stuff in the rig. Like that a lot and we got three rigs here um let's see what time it is because i got a session here to do folks all right i still got four minutes i can crank out i can crank out another one i'm gonna do new rig and we're gonna say um Let's go ahead and do Blinded by the Light. And this one I'm going to use some kind of uh, flange for. And I don't know what kind of amp he used back in the day. Let's just say he used a... Uh, I don't know. I don't think it matters. Let's say a Black Shimmer. Something with some headroom. And this throw in a flanger simple flange let's put this before the amp Now the key to this song, and I might be screwing this up. Um, the key is to having the wah pedal in there, and definitely need some reverb. Definitely need some reverb. Don't think it matters what it is at this point. Let's turn the tails on. Let's turn some delay on. 
some tape echo, that'd be fun. And let's turn the mix down a little bit. listen to the song again i heard it earlier today and i was like man i really like that song um mainly what i was hearing was was uh was the wall pedal going on and off Try a uh, I'm gonna try a, a chorus in here real fast. work on this one I'm only gonna have the time to do these four tonight uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this one up and then I'm gonna get on the website um, for what I was heard earlier in the song earlier in the day you got a wall some kind of chorusy flange thing going on definitely some reverb and delay and uh, let's go ahead and put in some overdrive Let's just do a uh, let's do a tri no, let's not do a trifuss. Let's just do a tube screamer. Keep it simple. And chorus after the amp, flange before the amp. <laughs> All right, guys. I am sorry. I do have to leave. I got my guys out here uh, for the recording session, but. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream from Brian today. That was very insightful. Uh, love the Headrush products. The touchscreen is amazing. All the sounds are amazing. FRFR speakers are great. And um, if you own one, then you should be very privileged uh, by doing so because they're amazing gear and amazing guys to work with as well. So... Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the website, drmcfarlandstudios.com. And uh, you will see all my rigs on there with the other playlists from YouTube and also a new membership site or new membership area to where you can gain access to further studying the music, gear, and recording.